Hello, and welcome to Knowledge 8, Lesson 2, The Animals of the Arctic Habitat. This one will be read to you by my friend Rattenborough, but first I want to introduce you to where the Arctic region is located. There it is at the very top of your map at the northern part there. It's in the northern polar area. Remember the North Pole on, when you're looking at a map is up and the South Pole is down. The Arctic is the region around the North Pole, which is not part of a single continent. And today you're going to hear about plants and animals that live in the Arctic region, both on land and in the water. So here we go with my friend, the rat. Hmm, I have to get myself in good voice. <clears throat> Hello again, Rattenborough the Adventurer to take you on a tour of one of the coldest habitats on Earth, the Arctic tundra. In the tundra, there aren't very many plants. In fact, there are no trees at all, and a rat like me has to wear long johns and mittens. The wind here is incredibly strong, which makes the air feel even colder. The ground is frozen, and nearly everything is covered in ice. In the winter, daylight lasts only a few hours, and at times, the sun does not come out at all. Some ice will still be here in the summer, but in the summer, the top layer of ice melts so that the ground gets wet and muddy. Ugh. The temperatures here are so low that people and animals, most of them, would freeze. All of these things make the Arctic tundra one of the least friendly habitats on Earth for plants and animals. Hmm. Some plants and animals can live only in the Arctic tundra in the summer months when the temperature is warmer, but some are able to live there all year long. <laughs> Arctic plants grow very close together and do not grow very tall, which keeps them from being blown away by the Arctic winds. The kinds of plants that can live in the Arctic tundra are mosses and different types of grasses. For once, I am one of the tallest things around. The animals that call the Arctic tundra habitat home all year round have adapted to the harsh conditions. When an animal has adapted to a habitat, that means it has changed over the years and now has special things that help it live in that habitat. For example, Many animals in the Arctic have adapted by growing heavy fur coats that help them stay warm in the cold temperatures. This creature is called a musk ox. The musk ox's long shaggy coat has an extra layer of hair underneath that keeps him warm when the temperature is cold enough to turn a rat into a popsicle and it sheds its extra coat of hair in the warmer summer months. Musk oxen travel in herds so they can huddle together for added warmth. Their hooves are very wide to keep them from slipping on the snow and ice. In the winter, musk oxen use their sharp hooves to dig under the snow and find plants to eat. Well, here comes an animal I want to stay hidden from. This is a wolverine. The wolverine uses its fur coat to keep nice and warm. Like the musk ox, the wolverine has large paws to help it move across the snow that come in handy when it's trying to catch food. These animals are called caribou and are part of the deer family. They are sometimes called reindeer. These caribou are traveling in a huge herd, which helps to protect them against attack by other animals. Caribou hair traps air, 
which helps keep these animals warm. Their hooves change depending on the time of the year, so they can walk and run on mushy wet terrain and on hard icy terrain. Caribou also have antlers to help them dig for grass in the snow. This arctic fox also has a coat that changes during the winter from a brown summer coat into this very thick white fur to help the fox blend into its surroundings. The fur also covers its feet so it can walk on snow and ice. And thanks to the fox's fur, it can hide and sneak up on birds, hares, and rodents like me. The Arctic hare's white coat becomes much heavier in the winter. Its ears are smaller than those of other hares, meaning less of its body is exposed to the cold. In other words, this is no place for critters with long dangly ears, unless they have long dangly earmuffs to keep those ears from freezing. The hare's white coloring also helps hide it in the snow and its back feet are wide and large, like small snowshoes, so it can run fast in the snow. There are other kinds of habitats in the Arctic besides the tundra, and different kinds of plants and animals live in these other habitats. The Arctic Ocean is a habitat rich in sea life and animals that rely on the sea for their food. The water is so cold in the Arctic Ocean that most living creatures would be able to stay alive only a few minutes in it. Animals such as the walrus call the Arctic Ocean home. These huge creatures just love the icy water and can swim around for a long period of time. Walruses have adapted to life in the Arctic Ocean by storing blubber under their skin. Blubber prevents heat from escaping their bodies. Walruses also have long teeth called tusks, which they use almost like arms to pull themselves up out of the water and onto the ice. Look at these cute animals. They are seals. Seals have blubber under their skin just like walruses. Some types of seals are born covered with a layer of white fur to keep them warm until they develop blubber. Seals are incredible swimmers. Like fish and walruses, seals don't have arms and legs. Instead, seals have flippers, and they swim by wiggling their bodies from side to side using their flippers to steer. They swim very fast, so they catch plenty of tasty fish. Thankfully, they don't eat rats. Here comes a polar bear. Look out! Let's hide behind this rock and I'll tell you about this amazing creature. The polar bear is perhaps the best known of all the animals living around the Arctic Ocean. These astonishing animals have adapted incredibly well to the harsh Arctic habitat. Polar bears are the largest bears in the world. Male polar bears weigh up to 1,700 pounds. That's probably heavier than everyone in your class put together, including your teachers. And polar bears grow up to 10 feet from head to toe. Yikes! <laughs> polar bears are covered with a heavy coat made up of two layers of fur, and they have a layer of blubber under their skin. Their ears and tails are very small, so that not too much of their bodies are exposed to the cold weather. It's a good thing they have all that fur and blubber and sharp claws because polar bears spend most of their life living on sea ice or chunks of ice that float in the Arctic Ocean. Sometimes polar bears take a dip in the icy waters of the Arctic to swim from one chunk of ice to another and they have webbed paws, sort of like a duck's feet, to help them swim. They use those mighty paws to hunt their favorite food, seals. Like all living things, Polar bears need water to survive, and they get that water from melted snow and ice.
Even though adult polar bears spend most of their time living on sea ice, polar bear babies, or cubs, are born on land. Their mothers, female polar bears, burrow in the snow to make a den. They will then hide in the den while they have their babies. They stay in the dens with their young all winter, and in the spring, they finally come out. The cubs stay with their mothers for almost two years to learn hunting and survival skills before leaving home. Now, speaking of home, I, I really must go. It's absolutely frigid here, and my whisker warmers just aren't doing the job. We've, we've learned a lot about the Arctic habitat and the animals that have managed to adapt and survive here. I, I think our next stop should be somewhere warmer, don't you? Remember that even habitats ex as extremely cold as the Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean can be full of life. Now, it's not easy for me to stay hidden in all this snow, and I can barely move with all these clothes on, so I'm getting out of here before I'm spotted by that Arctic fox. S see you next time!